In this video, you'll learn all about the pandas value counts function. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to my channel. Here I teach Python and data science tutorials and you can find a lot more, including written tutorials of these videos over on my website at datag.io. In today's tutorial, we'll cover off the pandas value counts function, which allows you to calculate frequency distributions of a panda series. We'll cover off how to normalize your data in order to show it as proportions, as well as include missing data and how to apply it to grouped series data. Let's get started. All right, let's write some code. I've already imported both pandas and numpy here and given, and given them the aliases pd and np respectively. I've then created a dictionary here that will feed into our data frame that we'll call df. I've included the code down in the description below if you want to follow along. Let's take a look at what this data frame looks like before we dive into the value counts function. So we'll print out the first five records by using the head function. We can see that we only have two columns. We have one that describes the level of a class as well as the number of students in each class. Now, in order to actually use the pandas value counts function, you don't have to pass in any parameters directly, but you do have to apply it to a series. In this case, we'll access a series by using the dictionary method. So we'll write df and then in square brackets students then we'll write value underscore counts. When we print this out, we can see that we get a series object returned that includes the counts of each of the unique values found within the students column, as well as how often these values occur. So for example, the value 10.0 occurs seven times in the data frame. Now, the value counts function can also be applied to non-numerical columns. So for example, if we wanted to apply it to the level column, we could again write value underscore counts. And we can see that each of the different categories occurs six times. Now, value counts are great, but what if you're wondering what the relative frequency of each of these occurrences is? Meaning, say you wanted to know what percentage of the values is actually 10.0. We can do this by using the normalize equals true parameter. So again, we'll write df students dot value counts. And this time we'll write normalize equals true. What we get back here is a relative frequency. All of these add up to one to make a whole. So in reality, this is 41.17%. This is incredibly useful information, but it's not always immediately intuitive that this can be converted to a percentage. Now, if we wanted to be able to convert this to a percentage, we can simply multiply the entire resulting series by 100. So we can apply this directly to here. When we rerun this now, we can see that we have 41.17% of the numbers being made up by 10.0. Similarly, 20.0 makes up 29.4%. Now, let's take a closer look at the actual data frame to see if we have any missing values. You can check out the tutorial that covers this off in more detail above, but let's dive right into it. We can use the df.info method to print out information on missing values. So we can see here that we have a missing value in the students column, but it's not showing up in our frequency distribution. By default, the value counts method drops any missing values from the frequency table. But what if we wanted to include this in here? So let's write df students again, and we'll write dot value counts, and we'll, we'll write drop na equals false. Now when we rerun this, we can see that we get the same values we had up here, but an additional missing value indicated down here. Now if we reran this with normalize equals true, we can see that the percentages change slightly given that we've now included the single missing value as well. In this case, you're only working with a small number of unique values, but remember the value counts function prints out the number of times each unique value occurs. Now say you had a spread of 100 different values, it might not be immensely meaningful to really split that up into a hundred different value counts. 
that's where the bins argument becomes really helpful. So for example, if you wrote df students dot value counts and then bins, and say we wanted to split this into three different bins, you could write bins equals three. Now when we rerun this, we can see that we only have three different values returned. We can see that both, all three of these different bins start with uh, parentheses and end with the square brackets. What this means is that the, va the first value here that's wrapped with a normal parenthesis isn't included but starts at this value. Similarly, if there's a square bracket, it means that it ends at that value but also includes it. So in this case, likely the data goes from 10 up to 20 and includes 20. Here the data goes from 20 but doesn't include 20 all the way up to 30. The bins argument makes it a lot easier to get a sense of how often different buckets of data appear. If you want to learn more about bucketing data, check out my histogram video tutorial which I'll link to right up here. The last thing we'll take a look at is combining the value counts method with the group by method. I've covered off the group by method, which you can check out up here, but what it essentially does is it groups your data by a certain column. So say for example you wanted to first group your data by the level column and then get value counts for the number of students within each of the different levels. You could then write df.group by level and then we'll use the square bracket here to access the students column dot value counts. What you can see here is that it still returns a series of data, however the data is first split up by level and then by the number of students within each class. So we can see here that within the advanced level there are three classes with only 10 students and two classes with 20 students and only one class with 30 students. Similarly, we can see the breakdowns for beginner and intermediate classes as well. Okay, so you've learned quite a bit in this video. You've learned how to calculate frequency tables using the pandas value counts function. You've also learned how to apply the different parameters within the function, including normalizing your data set to show relative frequencies, as well as how to include missing values. Finally, you learned how to use the pandas value counts function in conjunction with the group by method. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, be sure to hit the like button and click subscribe and then click the little bell icon to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. If you have any questions about today's tutorial, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to answer it. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.